seven episodes into this series, and we've stayed within our own galaxy. The universe has billions of galaxies. So, in this episode, we are going to pop next door and say howdy neighbor, setting a course to the Andromeda galaxy. Let's go. It's 2.5 million light years from Earth, so this may take a little while. We're now in interstellar space, which is a dark void in between the galaxies. Scott is still firing the main engines, accelerating physically, and we are at the maximum of warp factor 15. We're not going to edit the video here just so you can get a grasp of the distance. We'll eventually reach in total speed of 3,000 parsecs per second and still seem like we're hardly moving. It's gonna take one big retrograde burn to slow down when we eventually reach the Andromeda galaxy. Also, remember this is our nearest galaxy and all the dots of light you see right now are other galaxies. I think we need something faster than warp 15 to reach them in a reasonable time. Hello, I'm actor Jonathan Frakes from Star Trek. Please like and subscribe to Scott's excellent YouTube channel.
Scott has turned off the main engines. So we are no longer accelerating. With the physical speed and the warp factor 15, we are traveling at 3,000 parsecs per second, and it's still taking all this time to get there. The Andromeda Galaxy has a diameter of about 152,000 light years. Fun fact, our galaxy and the Andromeda Galaxy are expected to collide in around 4 to 5 billion years from now. So, no need to panic about that just yet. Here we go. It will be nice to see stars whooshing by again. See if we can find a star system to explore. We've found a nearby star system that seems to have a whole bunch of planets. Well, this is a pretty planet. Seems to have lots of moons too. Let's head over that way to have a look at that moon.
This planet looks a bit desolate and drab. A bit like Birmingham in England. But that is a pretty planet rise on the horizon. It's just a shame if we were to land on the pretty planet with the rings. We would be crushed to death. The background music is quite intended. Scott is old, if I haven't mentioned that before, and way back in 1985, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, Scott composed his first piece of music called Andromeda. The version you're hearing is a re-recording, as the old version was recorded on cassette tape. That's all for this episode. Next time we might explore some of the other planets and moons in this system. There seems to be quite a few of them to choose from. Thanks for watching everyone! See you next time.